There is a surprising overlap between people who use NixOS and people who own a Minecraft server, and if you happen to be one of them, or want to become one in just a couple of minutes, then this video is for you. Because NixOS makes creating Minecraft servers even easier than it already was. See for yourself, it's literally just two lines in your NixOS configuration. And you don't even have to worry about installing Java, downloading the server, opening ports, setting up a systemd service or anything like that. And so in this video, I'll show you how to manage a Minecraft server on NixOS, including declaratively managing all of its options, installing mods, or even managing several servers all at once. So without further ado, let's get straight to configuration. So just like I've said, the module needed to set up a Minecraft server declaratively is already built into NixOS, meaning all we have to do is add these two lines to your configuration.nix to get a fully working server accessible at the default 25565 port. After enabling these and rebuilding your NixOS configuration, you'll find your server in the slash var slash lib slash Minecraft directory, which can be changed using the datadir option if you want. The server will automatically be started as a systemd service, meaning you can use regular systemctl command to restart it or check the logs. And by default, the server will run the latest available version of Minecraft packaged in your current channel of Nix packages, which you can check by searching for the Minecraft server package on search.nixos.org. But it can of course be changed to anything you like using the package option. Nix packages provides packages for all major versions from 1.2 to the most recent version, and also a couple of other versions like PaperMC. It unfortunately does not provide any modded versions at the moment, but I'll show you how you can get those later in the video. But first, let's see how we can configure this server declaratively. Because while you can just straight up edit any files in the generated server directory, a more Nix way to do it would be using the declarative option. And what this option does is allow us to define server properties and server's whitelist using server properties and whitelist options respectively. I must say that I find this option rather confusing, because the other two could have easily been of type attribute set or null to check if they are enabled without any additional steps for the users, but I'm assuming this is just a remnant of the past because the module is more than 10 years old at this point. Anyway, everything you put into the server properties option will be translated into the usual ini format, meaning you can define everything from game mode and difficulty to simulation distance and level seed here. The whitelist option also works more or less how you would expect it to, so by assigning username to user IDs, you can select just a handful of accounts that can access your server. And last but not least, you can also define JVM options here, which will be appended to your java start command to start the server. Alright, so we now know how to quickly roll out simple vanilla servers for you and your friends, but for more complicated servers with mods and plugins, the built-in module will simply not be sufficient. And so now, I'll show you an alternative solution that you can use to define more complex servers. And it is called Nix Minecraft. Accessible with a flake, Nix Minecraft provides a module that allows you to define and run multiple Minecraft servers simultaneously, while also giving you access to way more many different versions of Minecraft, including all versions of Fabric, Quilt, Paper, Velocity, and of course Vanilla Minecraft in its overlay. To include Nix Minecraft in your NixOS configuration, add this URL to your Flake's inputs and make sure that the inputs are passed all the way to your NixOS modules with special args. Afterwards, open your configuration.nix and here include the modules in the imports to get access to all new options provided by Nix Minecraft and an overlay to get server packages in your packages instance. Now we can simply enable the newly added service and get back to creating servers. Like I've said earlier, Nix Minecraft allows you to define multiple servers at once, so to demonstrate, let's define one by simply adding an attribute named whatever you want to the server set. And so every server you add here can be configured with options very similar to the ones we applied to the built-in module with just a couple of differences. We obviously don't have to accept the EULA for every server, since we can simply set it to true in the service set, and the options like server properties and whitelist work the same way, except you don't even have to enable the declarative option, because here everything is handled automatically just like you would expect it to. And if you decide to create multiple servers, don't forget to assign unique ports to each one of them, because otherwise they will clash to claim the default 255651. Just like with the default service, we can select the version of our server using the package option, which can be assigned to various packages from the overlay. 
To avoid collisions with Nix packages, all servers live within their own set following a simple naming convention. So you'll find every vanilla server in the vanilla server set of your packages, every fabric server in the fabric servers, and so on. But be careful here, because every fabric package is also named after a Minecraft version. So if you need some specific version of fabric itself, we can override the package and set the loader version there. But of course, who needs a mod loader without any mods? So to install mods on your server, Nix Minecraft does not try to reinvent the wheel and simply gives you a quick access to your server's directory through the symlinks option. Meaning you can simply assign it to an existing mods directory from your file system, generate one by fetching every mod with fetch URL, or even straight up extract it from a mod pack using a fetch pack with mod pack function. This convenient function lets you fetch a pack with mod pack from the internet, and just like any fetch function, to use it you can simply input your desired URL, give it a fake hash, and wait for it to fail during rebuild so you can replace the hash with a correct one. And then we can simply access the content of a mod pack as if it was a normal directory. Like in this example, where I am only linking the mods directory from it, but you could also access any other files or directories. And after all of that, you can rebuild your system and once again find your server running as a systemd service, albeit with a slightly different service name. Actually, every server you enable will get its own service and directory, so you don't have to worry about them overriding one another. By default, you'll find every server in its own subdirectory of slash srv slash minecraft, but that can of course be changed with the now shared data dir option. So Nix Minecraft can easily be used to define complex servers, and the only major thing it's missing at the moment is probably Forge support. But now I want to quickly run through other alternatives you may want to know about. So one of them is called Flux, which lets you define various game servers, including of course Minecraft ones, and its primary advantage is that it uses MCMan for Minecraft servers, so if you know how to use that, you can give it a try. And another one is this git repo called NixOS modded Minecraft servers, which works similarly to Nix Minecraft, except it lets you write a start script yourself, so you can basically use any mod pack you want, but it does not seem to be actively maintained anymore. And while we are on the topic of maintaining, let me tell you about a great way to maintain your learning skills, which can be easily done with the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an excellent learning platform that offers interactive lessons on a wide range of technical topics, from programming and engineering to trendy fields like AI. And unlike other platforms, Brilliant focuses on helping you develop your critical thinking skills, because while specific details may fade, the skills you acquire will help you solve any technical problems in the future. But that of course does not mean Brilliant's lessons aren't memorable, quite the opposite. Each one of them features many of these beautiful interactive game-like scenarios, proven to be six times more effective than traditional lectures. And I don't know about you, but a great presentation always grabs my attention and helps me stay focused. So start your 30-day free trial now at brilliant.org slash and enjoy a lifetime 20% discount on Brilliant Premium. And now, I'd like to thank everyone who supports the channel and keeps it going, more specifically... Hoskins, Lasselus, Olaf K. Freund, Naughty Nut, Xavier, Albert C., Petrian, Tibalt Mole, Shen, Z, Workflow, Zach Beer, This is Liam, Much to Less, Bastian Asmussen, Allergic Duck, Nemo, Zamino, Veronica, Fire Squid 6, Lucian Thor, Tim LePace, Fernando Alex, GNRLVCNT, Anonymous Donations, and of course everyone who supported the channel previously. As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.